Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm wearing this fake doctor garb to reassure you that you're in the right place. If this were a real doctor's office, there'd probably be a skeleton in the corner, map of the human body on the wall, but there's not, because I'm simulating an actual doctor's office with incredibly advanced green screen technology. Through the next several episodes, I want to take you on my journey through prostate cancer. But first, let's have some disclaimers. For all the blamers, this is my disclaimer. I'm gonna say some things that are medically dubious. I'm not a doctor, not that kind of doctor. Cause I just wanna warn you before I tell you BS. See you, your brother, just all an oncologist. If you care about cancer prevention, or an astrologist, not an astrologist, just checking if you were paying attention. Cancer is nasty shit, so if you've developed it, don't wanna minimize the things you're facing in your world. It's my experience, I can't be serious. If I don't laugh, then I might cry just like a little girl. Girl who had cancer in her prostate, and girls don't have prostates, so they'd have to do experimental surgery. Installing the prostate, a tumorous prostate. Little girl, you have prostate cancer. That's how sad I would be. So this is my story. It will get gory. I hope it isn't boring. And one more warning. Though I want to savvy, the end may not be happy. Cause it's cancer. It all started with a visit to the primary care doctor back in September 2021. What's that sound? Oh, that's the perky version of the theme music. All the 60s sitcoms used to have perky, jazzy, and sad versions to play in the background and set the mood. Well, there's good news and bad news looking at your blood test. The good news is we won't have much call for that perky theme music. <laughs> uh, the bad news is your PSA is a little high. I don't give a damn, I'm invincible. Also, what's a PSA? PSA, prostate-specific antigen, is an indication of possible prostate cancer. It's supposed to be three or below. Yours is five. Lesson number one, PSAs are really useful. They are good signals for the possibility of prostate cancer. They're not an indication of prostate cancer. So have your doctor, if you're over 50, have your doctor uh, have a PSA test every year. So I have prostate cancer? No, the level can be high for a lot of reasons. For example, recent sexual activity. Well, I guess I have cancer then. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's best to track it. So let's look again in six months and see if it's increased at all. Well, five months later, I went to the bathroom. I actually went to the bathroom a whole lot of times during those five months, but I'm only going to talk about this one. Wow, that's troubling. I remember when I was back in my 20s, that was a manly stream. So I wonder what's wrong. And is that a drop of blood? At this point, I assumed I had a prostate problem and maybe it was cancer. Off to the urologist who specializes in dick-related things, including the prostate. First up, prostate exam, highlighted by a gloved finger in the back door. Okay, uh, let's drop your pants and we'll have a look around. I don't know, Doc, usually I'd make you buy me dinner first before I'd let you do- Yay! And you don't know, man, you weren't there. None of you were there. None of you were there. You don't know what I've seen. <laughs> well, there was a little asymmetry in your prostate. Could be standard prostatitis, which is pretty common in, in men your age. Uh, all the same, I'd like to have another look. What we're going to do is uh, I'm going to give you a magical prostate shrinking drug uh, that will allow you to pee like a teenage, like a, like a, like a, like a 50 year old. Um, I'd also like to get another PSA reading. If it's gone up, we'll have to schedule a biopsy. Biopsy? Just tell me, Doc, level with me. What hole do they go in? What hole? Oh, in the butthole. Oh, thank God. With a little pinchy thing that rips off pieces of flesh. So I was hoping to avoid the biopsy for obvious reasons. Well, 
that weekend, the PSA test did come back. On my phone, there's a little thing, hey, you have a new test result. And here's my warning. Every single bit of bad news I've gotten in this whole odyssey has come through the patient portal of my doctors. Okay, and for me, it's okay. I look at the results, and I always wanna know, I'm curious. And then I can do some research and I've got better questions for the doctors. But if you are somebody who takes bad news hard, where it's just gonna be a crushing blow and you're, you're gonna let your mind go crazy with these things, maybe stay away from the patient portal. Wait for the doctor to be able to package the results for you with the complete story, with the pros and the cons and the goods and the bads, okay? So the, that weekend, I'm sitting around with a friend, I see I got a new result, and boy, did the PSA go up. It went up over 12. So that said that, okay, I've gotta have a biopsy to check what the parts in there are made of. And uh, I've also got to have an MRI before so they can better target the biopsy. All of that's gonna be in the next episode. Uh, and I'm gonna leave you with a little uh, video that I made basically right around then when the reality was sinking into me just to kind of show you how I was dealing with the, the bad news. Um, not really not really all that worried. I haven't been all that preoccupied, but I mean, honestly, I've kind of internalized the idea that there's a really good chance of bad news. Whatever happens, it'll be a challenge. Uh, my understanding is it's not um, terminal very often. Um, let's go. Let's see what's next, and let's, let's do what we can with it. I'm invincible.